Hello everyone and God bless. This is Father Mikhail with another reflection. The problem of ecumenism seems to ever be growing as the Pope uh, Francis and Patriarch Bartholomew continue to push for their false union. It wasn't that long ago when Patriarch Bartholomew met in Rome with a bishop and they were discussing how they look forward to soon gathering around one chalice as brothers. This is serious. This is a false union, brothers and sisters. This is a false union. This isn't real. You know, there can be no union, as St. Gregory Palamas said, while they still hold to the heresy of the filioque, which, no matter how the Latins tried to swing it or explain it, still speaks to a double procession of the, of the divine person of the Holy Spirit, epistatically speaking. And this was, of course, uh, an attempt by the Latins to over-explain and defend the divinity of Christ. But in the process, they also have now have had a negative effect on the person of the Holy Spirit and thus have displaced the whole Trinity. But we're seeing these issues arising more and more that point to the errors within the Goark and the Ecumenical Patriarchate. And to my Greek brothers and sisters, I tell you honestly, do not wait till the 11th hour. Do not wait another year and a half to take action. Start taking action now. Don't give the EP any more of your money. Starve them out. You know, don't support your bishops with what they're doing. Archbishop Elpidophoros is more concerned with what the world thinks than with what the Lord thinks. He's more concerned with not offending the masses rather than offending God. He forgets the one whom he will stand accountable to, especially as a bishop. He went as far as to say that there were many paths leading up the same mountain and that it is our dogmas that stand in the way as boulders clouding our vision, but he does not realize that it is his own demonic pride that does this. And God help him, help him to see his errors. What I would honestly recommend to the faithful Greeks is to start petitioning Brokor bishops to maybe help you open Greek style churches or to, to support you because in, in Brokor, you will have more of a safe haven. You know, the, the, this is the fruits of the new calendar and of the ecumenical movement. This is what happens when we constantly try to rely on academics to tell us where the boundaries of the church are and where they are not. There is no difference between validity and efficacy in the language of the Holy Fathers. There is no case for this. There is no case for acknowledging the baptisms of heterodox when we should be baptizing everyone who comes to the church who is outside of it. Only applying economia as necessary for pragmatic reasons. And now we see further the fruits of this attitude uh, of this, this view of being the Pope of the East that Patriarch Bartholomew has taken. And now with this schismatic auto, so-called so autocephalous church of Ukraine, we now see the false uh, metropolitan Dumenko moving his, his, uh, his group onto the new calendar. So what, they're going to celebrate Pascha at the same time as all of us? That's true. And they're claiming, you know, Pascha is always at the same time for now until Patriarch Bartholomew and Pope Francis unveil their plans in 2025. But he's saying that it's because the old calendar is something fundamentally aligned with Russia. Let us be very clear, dear ones. This is ethnophilatism. There is a, certainly an issue with ethnophilatism among the Russians. There is an issue of ethnophilatism among the Greeks. There is only one nation in the church, and that is one nation formed in Christ. We are the Christian people. We are the new Israel. You know, we, we need to start taking this seriously. We need to wake up. We need to write our bishops. I said this before in my last video on tradition versus modernism, and this is still the ongoing truth. We are facing demonic lies. You know, St. Mark of Ephesus, the pillar of orthodoxy, would never have stood for this. You know, he would have never stood for these things. And now, now look at what's happening in the church with this whole Ukraine situation, this divide that it's caused, and how in all reality, the schismatic 
Autocephalous Church of Ukraine is on its way to uniatism. Recently on their website, they claimed that the filioque was acceptable. Now they've moved to the new calendar. What's next? You have to ask yourselves. They couldn't celebrate with, uh, with Catholic priests in the altar, and now they're going to become celebrating with Lutherans in Europe. I will do a separate video on that later. But this shows the fruits of their schism. This shows what and who they are. There is one canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and that is under Metropolitan Unifri. And the decisions of, of the council that they made there is perfectly canonically valid. Metropolitan Neophytus of Morphu talked about this. And again, I will do a reflection on this probably tomorrow discussing this matter. But we must be clear. We must resist these things. We must look clearly at what these, these teachers are saying. And this is the time where, yes, you should start considering looking elsewhere, going elsewhere. You know, it, it, for you, your orthodoxy should not be about being Greek. It should be about conforming to Christ. Just like it shouldn't be about being Russian. It shouldn't even be about being Ukrainian. Our orthodoxy is about right belief, right worship, and union with our Lord. And so we have to be careful of these demonic lies, these demonic lies that seek to make everything subjective as opposed to objective, that makes everything into a personal truth. This is the same demonic lie that the LGBT agenda spreads, that this whole, the, the trans movement spreads. It is a lie. It is a lie. You, you cannot be whoever you choose. You don't choose truth. Truth Truth itself is a person. Truth is objective. Now, people have the right to make their own choices, to live their lives as they will, but it doesn't mean that God necessarily accepts that. You know, God loves these people. He loves all people. He loves everyone. That is, you know, he, he especially loves the sinner. But God doesn't want you to stay as you are. And so now we're seeing with this ecumenical movement, Patriarch Bartholomew's name day being honored by Archbishop Elpidophros by him celebrating at a church that openly promotes non-Christian ideas and factions and is not remotely orthodox. It's Episcopalian, and he goes simply because of the name. This is the same one who performed his, his heretical baptism in Greece, knowing full well that the parents of these children will not raise them properly in the orthodox faith these are dark times we're living in we mustn't despair we must pray we must take our orthodoxy seriously we must spread it we must pray that god will bring more into the church and more people to to uphold the church and to live the christian life because that's ultimately what it's all about but we have these demonic lies of becoming brothers united around one cup. We have these demonic lies that tell us that the Meophysites are saying the same things as us, just with different language. They are not. They confuse physis, essence, nature, with person, hypostasis. And now the ecumenists are confusing lies with truth. And they'll turn things and twist things around and turn them upside down. Why? To fool those who are more easily swayed by supposedly logical or intellectual arguments. But this, this isn't logical. This isn't wise. This isn't divine. Instead, what, we're selling off the holy things? We're selling off Christ for silver? Because that's what this is. That's exactly what this ecumenism is. That's exactly what is happening in Ukraine. And that is, you know, with the autocephalous church and with how Patriarch Bartholomew just went and granted them the tomos and set up a parallel jurisdiction. Lord have mercy. The moment we start believing ourselves above all the holy canons, the more God will make us subject to them. God will not be mocked, dear ones, but man in his hubris will certainly be humbled. And so we must continue to stand strong. We must continue to pray Pray for Archbishop Elpidophoros. Pray for Patriarch Bartholomew. Even pray for these schismatics. But pray for them to repent. 
That is what we should be praying for, their repentance. We have to turn this around. We have to realize what is happening here. This is all just another setup for a false council of Florence. And in all reality, this is just to give the West more power over the Orthodox Church. Because why? Because we are a strong group. We are the true church and we are resisting against this woke demonic wave of spiritual darkness that they have cast upon us in our times. So with that said, it is important for us to continue to read the lives of the saints, the teachings of the elders, the Holy Gospels daily and to grow in Christ. Don't let one day go by when you're not reading something spiritual. Otherwise, you might find the well will dry up. Keep your prayer rope on hand. Always have your baptismal cross on. Always remember to cross yourself before and after you eat. Whenever you see an ambulance, whenever you see someone in need. Pray before you pray. Pray before you eat. After you eat, pray before you read. And especially before you read the Holy Scriptures. Because when we don't pray, when we don't ask for God's grace and assistance, we do this on our own strength. And our own strength will always, always fail in the end. So with that said, dear ones, I bid you a good night. Let me know what other topics you might want to see covered. I do plan to go into more detail about some of these things in a later video. But for now, God bless you all. Please like, share, and subscribe. And check out the link descriptions for the Discord, for the GoFundMe, and the Patreon. Have a good night.